Sleepy Joe better wake up and explain what the hell is going on because now it looks like he lied to the American people and our allies about the crisis in Afghanistan. And those lies could have contributed to the deaths of 13 American troops and left hundreds of our citizens stranded. So how's the White House going to spin this new fiasco? Well, here's what happened. Reuters unearthed transcripts of a July 23rd call between President Biden and then Afghan President Ghani three weeks before the country collapsed. In the call, President Biden reportedly said, and I quote, I need not tell you the perception around the world and in parts of Afghanistan, I believe, is that things are not going well in terms of the fight against the Taliban. And there is a need, whether it's true or not, there is a need to project a different picture. Hmm. As you recall, President Biden has claimed that nobody had any idea that a Taliban takeover was imminent. That is clearly BS. He knew what was coming and was trying to cover his keister. And look what unfolded. One of the biggest foreign policy blunders in modern American history. But the White House seems to think that we're all a bunch of idiots. Watch. Was the president in any way pushing a false narrative in that call with the Afghan president? I think it's pretty clear. Again, I'm not going to go into details of a private conversation, but what we saw over the course of the last few months is a, a collapse in leadership. And that was happening even before Ghani left the country. What the president has conveyed repeatedly, privately, and publicly is you need to stand up and lead your country. And that's something he said at a press conference in July in public forum as well. Or at least make it seem like you're leading the country, even if that's not true. Rational thinkers are not buying it. Today, North Carolina Congressman Dan Bishop told the Daily Mail, quote, in July, Joe Biden publicly downplayed the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan, calling it highly unlikely. Was he lying then? If he knew privately that the Taliban was winning then, how did his administration fail so horrifically in the end? 13 service members are dead and hundreds of Americans are stranded because of Biden's botched withdrawal. Americans deserve answers. And let's not forget about President Ghani, who took Biden's words right to the bank. Literally, he apparently went to the bank, took out $170 million and fled Afghanistan before the Taliban buggered his country. So the White House claims there was nothing fishy about the phone call. Huh. I seem to remember Democrats going nuts about a perfect phone call that President Trump once had with the president of Ukraine. No hypocrisy here, right? So did Biden lie to save his own skin? Or is he just a clueless oaf? Could be both. Let's meet tonight's party panel and suss it. We've got conservative strategist, human events contributor, and right turn strategies president, Chris Barron is back, yes! And she is the co-host of Gutfeld on the Fox News Channel, also a host on Fox Nation, Cat Tiv in Yeller, and Democrat strategist, radio host, and Fox News contributor, the Leslie Marshall. Uh, welcome everyone, let's get right to it. Chris Barron, uh, was this a perfect phone call with former Afghan President Ghani? Uh, well, I mean, it's a perfectly BS phone call. <laughs> Look, what is so amazing to me is the administration is now blaming Americans who are stranded on themselves, saying it's their fault. We warned them for months and months they were supposed to leave. Well, yeah, you were also telling people that the Afghan army, army was going to stand up, and you knew the Taliban was on the verge of takeover, and you're telling the president of Afghanistan to lie, to tell people everything is fine. I, I mean, it is unbelievable to me that we have a White House that not only abandoned American citizens, but is now placing blame on those American citizens when that same administration tried to convince them that everything was going to be fine in Afghanistan. This is absolutely atrocious. Yes, and uh, I don't care if it's about the dogs or stranded Americans. Uh, I, I don't think they're being straightforward. Kat, I think they have lied at every turn about everything, and I think that's what's going on here, no matter how Jen Psaki tries to spin it. Yeah, unfortunately, the one one of the common themes of the entire war in Afghanistan has been, you know, politicians and then, of course, top military brass generals, colonels trying to put a positive spin even when they knew things were not going well. We know this from the Afghan papers that were released in 2019, even going so far as admitting to altering data to try to make it look good, mm -hmm. to try to make things look good. And 
trying to, you know, alter public perception of this war. They knew that this was going to happen. Anyone who's ever been there, as my, my husband has been there, he knew when he was there, he was like, this isn't going to work. And these generals and a lot of these top military brass were lying about it, and politicians were lying about it. There's been no accountability on this. Uh, it's been really disgusting, really disgusting to watch. And it, it, it's just not going to change unless we start holding people accountable, because this is a, a massive, widespread problem. Yeah, and, and it also shows, Leslie, there's a huge chasm in the military between the warrior class, yes. like Kat's husband, and top military brass, because um, the administration, the, the generals, and everyone whom Kat spoke of, that class grows and grows and grows. That gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and there are more of them, and that's what leads to the mission creep, because essentially those people also become politicians. And when they start working with politicians who are in charge and Washington, that's when people die. That's when you have horrific outcomes like the entire war in Afghanistan. You know, since George Washington Kennedy, we have had a general saying one thing and, tr and troops on the ground going, ha, huh? mm -hmm. that's not what we see here. Uh, look, I'm a Democrat, and I've said before, we shouldn't ever and should not have left uh, anyone behind. But I would agree with Kat. This is not just under the Biden umbrella and the Biden administration with Afghanistan and painting pretty pictures. When you have the former administration and the secretary of state then, Mike Pompeo, negotiating with the Taliban, not the president of Afghanistan, not the Afghan government or officials from that government, what are you saying? We know you guys are going to be the new sheriff in town. The United States knew that. Were they the wrong? United States is not the only country that knew okay, that. So, All so of let our me ask you that. So, so let me ask you that. Would rise. So let me what ask we you didn't that. know, okay. and no one knew, is how fast it would happen. And we certainly didn't know that, <laughs> uh, that, that the president of Afghanistan was going to flee with a lot of money in the he bank. Did. That's probably he from us and our tax dollars. He, it, it is. It all was. I mean, $2 trillion goes somewhere. And right. uh, Ghani was one of the mm -hmm. few people who saw that, realized that the entire thing was imploding, and left. So uh, are you saying that Mike Pompeo and President Trump had no interaction with Ghani at all whatsoever when it came to negotiating the, this withdrawal? And are you also saying that they should have negotiated with them, even though it was obvious that the Taliban was in charge? Look, there's a lot of things here, and I'm not placing blame on Democrat or Republican. This yes, has been are. a failure for decades. <laughs> One, our military has been telling us that the Afghan military was not ready um, or prepared and would never be ready. So we yeah. knew we had to get so out of here. We them. should have never gone in yeah. there. And we really we need to look at what, what it was did never we work. do. We lost, you know, dollars. We lost lives. Yeah. For what? And at the Nothing. end of the day, every time we overtook the Taliban, we'd leave an area. They would resurface again yeah, and regroup really again. That's that's what we're really saying with, with ISIS K. They're an yeah. offshoot of this. Yeah, no, we're screwed. Uh, thanks, President Obama. All right, the panel's going to stick around. You better believe it. Ka ciao! Welcome back. A Florida restaurant owner is telling Biden voters they're not welcome at her business. Yesterday, she posted this sign on the front door. It reads, quote, if you voted for and continue to support and stand behind the worthless, inept, and corrupt administration currently inhabiting the White House that is complicit in the death of our servicemen and women in Afghanistan, please take your business elsewhere, end quote. Over the past five years, we've seen Trump voters demonized and bullied by Democrat zealots. Will stunts like this accomplish anything other than dividing us further? Uh, the party panel is back. Chris Barron, Kat Tim, Leslie, Les I don't know why I said Leslie. Leslie Marshall, I'm Terry Gross. <laughs> this is fresh air. Um, all right, so uh, let's do this, Chris Barron. I'm actually not a fan of this. And I know this restaurant owner, uh, she's really upset. And she's incredibly emotional, especially about uh, the 12 Marines and one sailor who all lost their lives needlessly. But is telling half of your potential customer base not to eat there really the best business decision? No, I, I hate this. I hate this. I, I really do. Look, I understand that she's angry. But I really hated the personalization of politics during the Trump era, where the left decided they couldn't even be friends. They couldn't break bread with people who voted differently from that for them. And I, I just don't want to see us on the right become those people. Uh, it's it's not it's not pretty. If you become so utterly obsessed and angry, it's just it's corrupting to your soul. So I, no, I don't like this. Yeah, and I understand where she's coming from, Kat. Uh, but 
I don't know, man. There's got to be there's got to be a better way, right? Just put a bunch of American flags up. And you know, <laughs> it positively pay tribute uh, to the lives that were recently lost, maybe. Yeah, that's certainly the better way to go. Um, you know, if she wants to do this, obviously she can. But again, I don't think it accomplishes anything by dividing us further and further apart because the political polarization of us versus them and what is what allows for so much corruption and mm -hmm. what makes the government overall a worse place because there's less accountability. So I think, you know, obviously she can't even enforce it anyway. She was she was feeling her feelings and she wanted to feel her feelings in public and I certainly have done that in one form or another. But <laughs> when it comes to uh, dividing us based, you know, on politics, I think that it does a lot more harm. And yeah, and, and no by good. the way, it's people who complain about that, people who complain that we're too divided, everything's polarized, everything's political, and then, you know, they go and do stuff like this. Now, uh, Leslie, I know you regularly stand outside Republican watering holes with a bullhorn, and, <laughs> and you shame people and, and you yell at them <laughs> to leave. So you're in favor of this, correct? Absolutely not. <laughs> let me let me tell you why. Uh, one, I uh, by the way, to Chris's point, I have a lot of Trump supporting Republican friends here in California, and we don't just break no. bread together. We break tequila shots together. Okay, but this restaurant owner, that look, there are people in the military, there are veterans, and there are people who fought in Afghanistan who voted for Joe Biden. So she's going to cut off the Ew. vets. She won't feed the vets because you know if they voted for Joe Biden. If I ever, I don't care if it's a liberal. Or or a conservative owns a restaurant and asked who I voted for before they hand me a burger or some fries, I'm out of there anyway. And then lastly, I don't like to name call, but I'm going to. This is stupid. I'm not calling her stupid. I'm calling the choice You're and decision stupid, stupid as a business owner. <laughs> as a business her. owner, you want everybody's <laughs> money. You should. Yeah. I want your money. <laughs> uh, how much did you, how much did you pay for that bowl horn? I heard it's gold. All right, you know, in Hawaii, the word aloha means you're under arrest. That's what 24-year-old Chloe Mrozak learned the hard way after she, uh, officials rather say, she used a fake COVID passport, not even a passport, just a CDC vaccine card to go on a tropical island vacation. Hey, man, I don't blame her. I went to Hawaii in July, and it was pretty fly. Morozak flew into Oahu, reportedly presented to airport officials with a phony COVID card that spelled Moderna wrong. Authorities nabbed her when she attempted to board a flight home, and that's when the Illinois native was charged with falsifying federal documents. She could get a $5,000 fine and up to a year in prison. Uh, does she deserve hard Hawaiian time? Uh, absolutely. No, I don't know. Um, Chris, they're going to make an example of her because a lot of people, it's really easy to fake a CDC card. And if you're going to fake a CDC card, at least spell things right. <sighs> yeah, I mean, look, look, I, I want to laugh at this. I want to imagine that she packed like clown shoes in her luggage or something because this is so ridiculous. Clown flip -flops but then I look at, then I look at this and, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> but then I look at this and I think like, it, this actually proves a point. How are we going to enforce this stuff? Is this what we're really going to be using the government and the, our, our, law, our law enforcement's time to be doing is arresting people because they are you know, forging vaccine passports? I mean, to me, it just undermines that this entire uh, underlines this entire system of vaccine passports is crazy. It's unenforceable. We, we're, we already no, have it, enough I mean, it is enforceable. In that's, this country. But see, that's, that's what we're saying. It actually it is enforceable but because be. she lied and she got caught and now she might go to prison for it. Yeah. Cat? Yeah, and look, I what I don't understand is clearly she's very, very opposed to the vaccine, right? Uh, some people have that their reasons for this or that. I want to know what her reasons are, because not only did she spell Moderna wrong, <laughs> she also told the cops that she went to the doctor and she paid for it, which nobody yeah. pays for this. I, when you know, I, I mean, paid for my vaccine, they yeah, gave me that's, that. That's not so it's like. <laughs> How can you be so opposed to something you clearly haven't even Googled? Yeah. You know, like you're going to go through the forgery <laughs> route before you Google it first. Not that forgery is ever cool, but, you know, before you go forgery, you got to go Google and then spell check. Yeah. Google, spell check, then forgery. Then forgery. That's the order. Don't go with the forgery first. Um, now, Leslie, I heard that you've called the police on several people that you thought forged vaccine cards because your husband's a doctor. Your thoughts? 
<laughs> no. Uh, okay. One. She also said the NRA administered her Moderna vaccine. I'm sorry. I was Maybe. laughing when I saw a shot of this online today. Uh, if you are so opposed to the vaccine, okay, and people are, I don't know why, but if you are so opposed to the vaccine, why would you want to go somewhere like a little island that's trying to protect itself and keeping its numbers yeah, go low? Yeah, to Key West. And that is go, their I was right, going to say the same thing, they're a little Florida. island. And, and, and why, go, why go to Hawaii? Yeah, go to Florida. Go somewhere go that doesn't say you need a vaccine a to go to that slide. state. I would go to Florida. I love Florida. Florida's great. I would just be like running around in my green thong like <laughs> Not for any particular reason. It just sounds like a great time. You do that at home too. Yeah, so. and sometimes on the street. <laughs> the neighbors aren't really fans of it. Uh, but yeah, I think they're going to take this lady. They're going to they're going to make her a prime example. Now her face is everywhere. She has been shamed. She'll be canceled. She'll be fired from her job. Uh, it was a dumb mistake. But it just you know it's like until the rules change, go somewhere where they want you. Party panel, I want you all always. Chris, Kat, and Leslie, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.